Howdy my friends and welcome to the channel today. I'm Luke Thunderhead289 here on YouTube and today we're going to try and start up my 1976 F-250. You know I've had this thing for you know quite some time at this point but when we moved here uh, I used it to move and then that was a couple years ago now and I haven't started it since. Now it's got a 390 FE uh, four-speed transmission in it and so, you know, it's a pretty stout old rig. I bought it for $1,000 back in 2018, and it's never let me down. Now, uh, unofficially, FE st seems to stand for forever. You know, this engine has 180 some odd thousand original miles. I got an FE up there with 130,000 miles, and they both run like a top, or at least this did. And so today we're going to see, you know, if she can crank back to life, because uh, naturally, I need to use it. And so we're going to throw her right back into work. So getting the hood open here. Looks about like I remember it. FEs seem to leak oil from every orifice possible, or even things that aren't an orifice that it shouldn't leak from. But anyway, a good amount of mouse poop and leaves in here. It's got a 600 Holly on it. So anyway, we'll see if she can crank to life. She's a camper special, so it's got some upgraded brakes from back in the day and whatever. You know, everything pretty antiquated at this point. Naturally, when things sit, they become a storage container for this, that, and the other thing. I had actually lost my Galaxy hood for a while and come to find out, oh, I'd put it in the back of the truck. I'd completely forgot that it was here. So anyway, let's get this thing cranking. All right, so first things first here. Um, I never like to crank an engine over that's been sitting for a long time, even though the gas is probably a couple years old. Ah, eh, that's probably okay. We're gonna drive it right to the gas station, of course. But, you know, if you're cranking it for a really long time, the engine really isn't spinning fast enough to lubricate things well. And I'm just not a big fan of dry cranking. So I like to fire things off as soon as I get them rolling. And the best way to do that, since definitely our carburetor is entirely dry at this point is it it kind of works out where my wife is a veterinarian so we have these syringes laying all over the place you can simply just fill the float bowl like so right in through the vent We're gonna do this till it's good and full, and that way, you know, we have fuel like immediately when we crank, and it has the best chance to fire right off. All right, we got fuel to the accelerator pump. So I think, choke still works, I think we're good to crank it. I might need to get a battery though. All right, one battery. That's fine, what could go wrong? Haven't been in here for a really long time. I technically committed the carnal sin where on a manual vehicle, if you park it for a long time, you really want to wedge the clutch pedal down. Um, reason being is it can actually, the pressure plate and clutch disc can all kind of seize together. But this engine leaks enough oil, so I wasn't really that worried about it. And it seems to work. Brakes go to the floor as is tradition. Okay. So, see if we got any signs of life. Got a little pump action. And I don't think our jump pack's gonna have the nuts today to do it. Big FE takes a lot of power to roll over. Guess it's time to go steal a battery. All right, who's gonna donate their battery? Eh, kind of hard to get out. And I use that quite a bit. Definitely the easiest battery to get out, but I drive it every day, so I think we're gonna pass on that one. And finally, our old friend, the other FE vehicle, so it just only makes sense. It's been a really good car, but I just don't drive it as much these days. And the other FE in our family here, it's also a factory four barrel, but this is a 352 from 1964. It's Never been out of the vehicle, has about 130,000 miles or so, and still runs like a top. These FEs, I don't know what it is, they just run forever. 
12, 18. Back in the heyday when I did all this revival stuff all the time. Most of my batteries are ironically from 2018. So not a new unit, but it should be all right. All right, here we go again. Like I told you, fire's right to life if you have a little bit of fuel in the carb. All right. There we go. Couldn't even remember where the oil pressure gauge is. That is just something, you know? That's like two years. I don't even think it made a full rotation. It just lit right off. This 390 is just, it's beyond mortal, you know? <laughs> Something about these old cars, man. I even try and get away from them and stuff like that always puts a smile on my face. Get a look at everything here. Your typical three speed with your granny low. Some people call it a four speed. I technically always call it a three speed, but anyway, old school tachometer that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Oil pressure gauge, vacuum gauge. Look how rock steady the vacuum is on this engine after all this time just can't believe it 180 some thousand miles 185 I know because when I bought the thing it had the documentation in it and it's documented through all the way up to like 160 170 thousand miles and that engine definitely hasn't been out anytime recently so she's just one heck of a good runner that old greasy engine just doesn't know how to quit always just amazes me A little exhaust leak action. A lot of exhaust leak action. Now the Achilles heel as to why I don't drive the F-250 as much as I do the F-100 sitting over here is that it has a couple of things that I usually try and avoid when I deal with classic vehicles. It has power brakes and it has power steering. What do you want to bet the two things are that have issues with this truck? The power brakes, you know, that kind of leaks and it sucks the brake fluid out of it as you saw we just had to add some. And the power steering leaks and causes issues as well. Now the F-100 over here it doesn't have any power brakes. It doesn't have any power steering. Um, as much as that might be to some people's opinion to be uncomfortable per se, you know, it's extremely reliable and I've never had to really mess with this truck. But really all that stuff isn't too big of a deal. You know, you just gotta kinda keep your eye on it and you're just fine, especially with this truck. But other than that, it's a pretty good rig. Let's go for the old granny low, maybe. There we go. Now, if I remember right, I can just not even touch the gas pedal and this thing can idle itself around. Can it idle out of the hole though? Sure can. What a unit. doing pretty good for sitting for a couple years driving it's like I never quit driving it you know just jumped right back to work so just for the sake of doing it we'll go through the gears here including our granny low so we'll just let off the clutch no gas pedal like granny low is second gear clutch is a little rough but it's clean enough probably has some rust on it for sitting so long third gear probably has 
got some 410 gears in it or something, you know, because uh, it's camper special, so it's made for towing. So, uh, you know, at 65, you're up around 2,800 RPM or so. So it's made for pulling stuff. And for what it doesn't have an acceleration that the F100 has, it makes up for in torque, because it's, it's definitely a monster when it comes to that. <laughs> 